Hello everyone, welcome to this amazing teaching by Pastor Chris. Now what you're going to learn in this message will teach you a lot. So don't only pay attention to the message. Put whatever you're going to be learning from this message that I'm about to play for you now to work. Okay, and it will work for you. When once you put what you learn to work, there is no how it will not work for you. So I want you to pay clear attention. If possible, use a book and a pen and write some point down so that you can review them later. Okay, so pay attention to this awesome message, which you will learn a lot. All right. Okay, so I'm going to play the message for you now. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. All right. See you there. We're going to read from verse 7, okay, into verse 8. Let's read. We'll read from the ESV. The ESV gets it right here. It says, Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you your elders, and they will tell you. See, I said we're joining back in time, and we're looking at what happened. Even here, he reminds them of the past. Okay? Now go to verse 8. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind... He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. Now, the Masoretic text says according to the number of the children of Israel. That's erroneous. It's actually the sons of God. Now, the term sons of God, wherever you find it used in the Old Testament, the term applies to angels, not to the children of Israel or to human beings. The term re refers to angels. And you see sons of God in the Old Testament. It refers to angels. So what he's telling you here is that the Lord, when he began to organize men into nations, he appointed them under angelic supervision. The angels were called watchers. All right, now let's read verse 9. But the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted heritage. This is remarkable. So he says, he apportioned the various nations under different angels, but to Jacob, which is Israel, he apportioned to himself. He apportioned to himself. And as you study more, you'd see what he did. And appointed an angel that reported directly to him over them. And that's Michael, the archangel. Okay. So, these angels had charge over these various nations. Now, let's go, um, we'll read just one more verse, then I'll take you to some other part of the same book, same chapter. Read verse 10. He found him in the desert land and in the howling waste of the wilderness. He encircled him. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. God took care of Israel. That's what he's saying to you. Now, you go to verse 17. See, between verse 10, I'm, I'm trying to cut it short. You can read it for yourself later. Between verse 10 and verse 16, 
He tells us how eventually Israel turned against God and sinned against God. All right? And what did they do? Look at it. It says they sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods they had never known, to new gods that had come recently, whom your fathers had never dreaded. See, he's reminding them. He says, find out from your fathers. They know about this stuff. See, they began to worship the gods that those other nations began to worship because those nations had some of their angels do the wrong thing. The angels became part of those fallen angels that were now in love with the women of those nations that they were supposed to be in charge of. And the Bible says they had sexual relations with them and produced giants. You see this in Genesis chapter 6. And you can read, again, read that for yourself. So they produced giants. There's where giants came from. That's where giants came from. And those angels who were so assigned and left their estates, the estate that was prepared for them, the Bible tells us they've been put in chains. Awaiting judgment, sentencing to their final place, which is a lake of fire. But currently, they are in chains, in prison. But then, what about? the ones they gave birth to through those women. The Bible says they produce huge, huge personalities, big giants. And these giants themselves multiplied over these nations and corrupted this early word corrupted the nations. Corrupted the nations. Now, whenever these giants died, their spirits, being neither angels nor humans, continued roaming in the earth. And these are demons. Demons are characteristically different from two classes of fallen angels. There are two classes of fallen angels. The one class is the one I just told you, but they are in prison. The other class of fallen angels are the original ones that fell with Lucifer when he rebelled against God. So those are the ones in hierarchical orders today and they rule over men's lives along with these demons. But those ones have spiritual bodies and generally do not... um, generally do not possess humans. The demons have no bodies. They have no spiritual bodies. They they have been 
um, they're, they're naked spirits. Now, when you read in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, Paul alludes to this when he tells us that, I should read it to you, so because I, I don't think some of you are acquainted with it. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just a quick one. It says from verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and a house not made with the hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. You see, it says, being clothed with our spiritual house. Can you see it? You have a physical house right now, which is your physical body. And when you come out of this physical body, you're supposed to get into a celestial body. It says, otherwise, you'll be found naked like demons. So demons have lost their physical bodies and God's not giving them any spiritual body because they are the, they are the offspring of fallen angels, rebellious angels. So God doesn't give them a body. Remember, he says to every seed he gave a body. So the body is a gift from God. He's the one that gives the body. So he don't give those demons any body. So they are naked spirits. And that's why they always want to enter into somebody, enter into something. You remember when Jesus, when Jesus spoke to, to them when they possessed that man in Gadar. And they called out to the master and said, please, um, if you cast us out, let us enter into the swine. See, they, because they couldn't be without bodies. They have to enter into a body. So Jesus gave them leave and they entered into the herd of swine, 2,000 of them. And those, those swine, wouldn't, they wouldn't stay with demons. They ran mad into the water. And... Got choked and died. Well, the demons will be out looking for another place to go. Okay. Now, with that understanding, follow this. In that verse, verse 17, chapter 32, where we read, he says, they sacrifice to demons. Not gods. Look at it in the King James Version. I want you to see the strength of the language. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. And, and he says, to gods whom they knew not. So they sacrifice to devils. They were called what? Gods. Those demons were called gods. So all the time they were sacrificing Egypt in the palace, Pharaoh was sacrificing to, to those gods. The Bible says he was actually sacrificing to demons. So these were the gods that they had. The sun god was a demon. The moon god they called was a demon. And I showed you, I showed you some time ago, well, I was reading to you from the book of Revelation, and um, uh, I, I talked about uh, Zeus, the Greek god, the demon. The Romans called him Jupiter. These are all evil spirits, not God. But they're called gods, and they were worshipped. 
And many still worship them today. But here's the beautiful thing I'm, I'm, I'm bringing to you notice. When Jesus came, he carried out a ministry that nobody else had. He cast out demons. None of the prophets cast out demons. But here comes Jesus. The demons manifest themselves. And Jesus speaks words. And then the Bible says that they were amazed at him. And they said, with authority, he commanded the evil spirits and they obey him. They said, with authority, he commanded the evil spirits. They knew about evil spirits, but then they didn't know what to do. They had no power over them. But Jesus demonstrated power over evil spirits. These demons, which they call gods. And then the apostles began to do the same. Jesus gave them the power to cast out demons. And you know what? Gradually, these gods, the Christians exercised power over the gods. And before long, the demons had no more power to control those cities, those towns, those families. The idols were now empty. The fear of the idols was, was gone because the demons behind them were cast out. The Christians exercised power. Didn't you read it? Caesar's palace. There were Christians in Caesar's palace. What do you think they were doing? They cast out devils. So even though Caesar had idols, but the idols were powerless now. Rome, Rome was brought to his knees. Because the demons were cast out by these Christians. They exercised divine authority over demons. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. And so, before long, before long, there were differences. The schools, the demons didn't control the schools anymore. The institutions were no longer controlled by these demons. Amazing. The cities were no longer controlled by these demons. And many people thought it was just education. No, no, no. It wasn't just education. It was Christianity. It was Christianity. There is where the power is. It's in Christianity. The world changed. Because Christians exercised dominion over demons as it traveled throughout the Mediterranean and expanded the work to Africa. They expanded the work to the north, to Russia, to the east, to China. The gospel went with power. And it changed the world. That's what changed the world. I want you to understand. That's what changed the world. Otherwise, the world would have continued and you would have uh, in all the palaces as they were doing it, the worship of Jupiter, Zeus, all right? The, the worship of all these gods. They still had them. They still had them, a lot of places they still had them, but they had been so much beaten down because the demons had become silent. They had been driven away. God's people cast out demons. They were now empty idols, empty idols. Rako soka bra ligra sobra underges. Empty idols. They still call the names, but those demons wouldn't come. So what happened then? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, because there's been changes over a period of time. Over a period of time. I want to read to you what the Bible says 
in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12. And before I, before I go in there, maybe I should give you a picture so you understand when I say that the, the Christians dealt with these demons. Let me give you some pictures from the Bible. Um, first, I'm going to show you prophetic insight from the book of Job. 